Well, I think today and yesterday and, and the other examinations of aquaculture in relationship to the, uh, the Fraser sockeye stocks, I think it clearly underlines the need to have a, a public inquiry or a judicial inquiry into the state of aquaculture, both in terms of the environmental impact that it represents and the impact it has on other salmon species. How do you think it went today? It's pretty, well, uh, pretty dramatic. Well, I think you know the part of what I was disgusted about today was government and uh, industry lawyers focusing to discredit Alexander Morton rather than getting on and having a look at the information that was being proposed and to be considered in terms of impacts. I mean, if it was simply a character assassination, why did they wait until we get on the stand to do that? It makes no sense. They're not here looking for answers. They're looking just to discredit opposition to the industry. Yeah, and they're on the clock. Um, what do you think about the fact that, and I, I, I know it was just days ago, there, there was no First Nations on the panel, that seemed kind of crazy. Well, today I found it most offensive when they were asking opinions of the panel about from a First Nation perspective. And to me, it's ludicrous to ask a non-native about our perspective. I thought that Canada, we had moved beyond that and we recognized that we speak for ourselves, that we're more than capable to represent ourselves in such places. But the decisions that were made up there in that room prior to us getting there, they didn't want First Nations on those panels. And I think that's the, the shame of Cohen. What's got to happen? What's got to happen? I think we have to stop uh, debating. I think we need to uh, get on with the precautionary approach for wild salmon. DFO's primary role has been looking after the wild salmon stocks and other species in the environment of Canada. And yet here we've got them focused on an industry that's new to this country, and to the detriment of the wild salmon in the environment, and they're paying attention to the bottom line and propping up this industry. Well, I, I think uh, what, what has to happen is that uh, the industry itself has to recognize that there are serious problems that they need to address. The pattern with the sockeye, you know, the timing, the sockeye began to decline exactly when those salmon farms went onto the migration route. And only the sockeye that go by the fish farms are in decline. And when Dr. Miller tried to figure out why all these sockeye were dying just before they spawned, her her research found a virus called salmon leukemia virus, evidence for that virus, which is also in those salmon farms. And so she has been prevented from finishing that work, but I'm hoping through this inquiry that we can really make sure that she's able to complete that work. Because the First Nations of the Fraser River need to know, are there brain tumors in these fish or not? Is there a cancer cause or virus in these fish or not? I mean, this is a really important question that DFO can't hide anymore as a result of this inquiry. So, so what's next? I mean, the fish farm, Cohen moves on, so what's next? I, w I want to brief the First Nation chiefs of my territory and also anybody who wants to hear what I feel all these records say. Now, finally, it's a huge weight off my chest because I, I went to the chief of the, the, her, the elected chief, uh, Bob Chamberlain of the Brown Archipelago, and I said, Bob, I'm really uncomfortable, but I know more about your fish than you do. There's things I know that you don't know. And, and if you want, I will get out of the inquiry and I'll just tell you. And he said, no, stay in, stay at the end, and then come and tell us. And so, what's the first thing you're going to tell him? <laughs> Thank you for trusting me. But there's a serious problem, a very serious problem, and the salmon farms have got to get off the Fraser Sockeye migration. That is all there is to it. I was so concerned that I was failing the salmon, and uh, it was so frustrating that we weren't able to answer questions about what I learned. 500,000 documents were submitted to this inquiry, and I read a lot of them. And they, they have quite a story to tell. And so, um, yeah, I was frustrated I couldn't talk about that, but I can talk about it now. Did you find that uh, the feds, the provincial, uh, seem to be impeding the process as much as... Well, <laughs> this was astonishing. <laughs> the federal government and the provincial government just attacked me. My education, my blogs, this, that. They, they had my report, and I fully expected to be talking about that report. And I assume that when they looked at it, they were like, oh, she's probably right, let's attack her on something else. I, I don't know why they would do that. It was very, that was very strange to me. It seemed to me like they were running the clock and killing time. Um, possibly killing time. I mean, the salmon farmers had nothing to say to me, which was, was interesting. But I would have thought they would have been interested in you know, what, what did you learn in those documents? What were all the scientists saying? Uh, you know, why did you spend so much time 
reading these documents? What did you learn? Because what, what, what you learn is that DFO doesn't know what's going on in these salmon farms. No, none of the senior management was reading the, the fish farm records. And so they defended something they totally didn't know. And the scientists that were going into the rivers, they were going, they were saying, you know, these are the worst gills I've ever seen. They were saying these fish are bleeding to death. You just touch them and they start bleeding. And they said there's brain tumors in them. And they couldn't figure it out until Dr. Miller came and she wasn't looking at the, at the symptoms of the fish. She read the information in their cells. And it was very bad for her that everything said virus. And when she looked really at which switches were on and off, she's like, oh, that looks like salmon leukemia virus. So this was not convenient for her. The, you know, you in DFO, if you go against fish farms, if you say anything against fish farms, your career is, is on, you know, difficult territory. So, and her husband is in aquaculture. So the last thing she wanted to find was any relationship to aquaculture. But for me, when I started this, the needle was like this. What, what, what happened to these sockeye? What happened to these sockeye? And then slowly reading everything, it just... Oh. And now it's just pointing straight at these farms. And until the farms are tested, we won't know for sure, but the timing, the geography, you know, the fish that went missing, the way DFO cut off her funding, everything points to salmon farms. Just one last question. You're from Echo Bay, and this what, that's sort of what got you into all of this. How, how was the pink run this year? Uh, the pink run is still underway, but it's very, very poor. Yeah. Why is it poor? I don't know. You know, I, I've had to completely take my attention away from that area, but what I do know now is sea lice are a big problem, but they are not the only problem. There are all the major diseases that Norway's dealing with in fish farms, all the new and emerging diseases. The vet for the province that's opening up these farm fish is reading clinical signs of those diseases. Pancreatic diseases, salmon alpha virus, heart and skeleton mu muscle inflammation, cardiomyopathy, infectious salmon anemia. Wow. I, you know, when I, when I was reading that, I was like, I, I was hoping that we were going to prevent these things. And so we still don't know for sure they're here. But the vet who's looking at these fish is saying, well, that is the clinical sign of that and that and that and that. And then nobody's doing the follow-up tests, so it's it's a very uncertain situation. When I was up there, there was about six or seven fish farms. In that area. How many are there now? Uh, right now, I believe there's about 27. I don't know how many are open at the moment. There's usually about 20 that are operating at any one time. It's so so 600,000 to 700,000 fish per farm. It's huge numbers. And the, the whole trouble with salmon farming is it breaks the natural laws. It holds salmon stationary. Salmon are built to move. There's predators that are just picking off the dead ones, the dying ones, the sick ones, all the time. So disease doesn't build up. And when they go into the rivers, they all die. And so that breaks the cycle of disease. So the little fish come out and it's a clean ocean. But the way it is now, the wild salmon pass the farms. They pass the disease often and parasites to the farms. And then these things grew all winter. And when the little guys come out, they slam into more pathogens and they're built to, to survive. So, uh, no, this is, it's a sort of a pleasure trip, but it's, it's a bit of trouble making. So you've been involved in a way in the fish farm industry back in Europe and Ireland? Only in so far as I actually wanted to open up a fish farm. I thought it would be a great idea. It was clean, you could make money, you were sort of helping nature. And then as I got more and more into it, I began to realize how awful the bloody thing was. You know, so uh, I turned against it. You said uh, you wrote a paper uh, regarding it? I wrote um, a treatise called Intensive Fin Fish Farming in Ireland, A Cause for Concern, 1989. And that exposed all the uh, environmental side effects that were attached to the industry, which were many. Have many of those side effects come to pass in Ireland? In Ireland, yes, and in Scotland, and in Chile, and unfortunately in British Columbia. And that's why I'm here today, because I wanted to see what was happening at the end of the What's his name? Cohen. The Cohen. Uh, yeah, inquiry. Yeah, inquiry. And uh, just see what was happening. And it's much worse than I ever thought. Because what happens is, or what has happened, is the Norwegians destroy their own back garden. Then they move to Scotland, then to Ireland. And they carry out and made the same mistakes in each of the countries. But when they transferred from Norway, where they've been told they can't expand anymore, they moved into Ireland and they said, no. 
nothing about the damage that's being done. They pretended this industry was clean and environmentally green and had no environmental side effects. But unfortunately, the uh, problems began to surface. And in Ireland, it started off by the decline of the sea, sea trout, followed by the decline of salmon. And after a while, the, the uh, the fish farmer says, well, it's nothing to do with us. But of course it is to do with them. And they're repeating the problems, as I said, in Chile, Scotland, Ireland, and now in British Columbia. And today I heard that uh, what's happening is new, but it's not new. It's been going on for 25 years. And the people who claim that it's new have known about it for the last, as I said, 25 years. And they've remained stum about it. And they're claiming that they just don't know what's happening. But they know damn well, what's happening? What do you think of the Corwin inquiry today? Shambles. You had a very good example of the Canadian government who are really in cahoots with the fish farming. They supported financially and psychologically. They wanted to succeed. And you have the same department in Canada supposedly overlooking the protection of the salmon and at the same time overlooking the fish farms. And of course the fish farms are destroying the stocks of the wild fish. But the government is, is doing nothing, it's turning a blind eye. And what was amazing about the Cohen Commission today was the government scientists attacking the only decent person on the panel, from my point of view, was uh, Alexandra Morton, who spent a whole life trying to protect these creatures, and the, uh, the government solicitors trying to uh, nitpick her university and her degrees, and trying to find fault with her personal life, rather than concentrating on the problem of trying to save or find out what's wrong with the sock guy in British Columbia. I think it's petty. It's petty on the, on the part of government to, to start questioning the type of college she went to. Who cares, right? I mean, what they're effectively saying is that once you get your degree, you stop learning and it's not possible to continue learning. The only way to learn is to get a PhD. The only way that, that you can draw on your experience experiences in life and draw knowledge from those around you is by going to university and having it all stamped and sealed. And, th and that's absurd. Do you think some of the questions that were asked today of uh, Alexander and Catherine had any relevancy at all to the uh, problem right now we're having with Sokka? It seemed like they were doing a character assassination of anything. They, they certainly didn't question the qualifications of anybody else from the government. But when Alexander Morton came up, they said, oh, uh, you are from American University? Isn't that a radical university? You can you could check out the, 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 the actual transcript. And that's exactly what he said. You know, he was trying to make Alexander Morton a radical, an activist, and she, and without any credentials. And, you know, it, it was, it was, a, this was a sad day for, uh, the government of Canada to try to belittle somebody on on the stands like that. It was a sad situation. It was, it was like emotional roller coaster being in there. At one point, I stood up and I, I almost just had to leave. It was really hard to watch. And then I sat back down because you're in this process, you know. And when they when you go for a break and you step outside, you just want to go wash, <laughs> you know. Um, watching the federal government just go at Alexander Morton, um, it, it was like everybody was dancing around the elephant in the room, which is like, what happened to the Fraser Sockeye? You know, where are those fish? And uh, it was it was really devastating to see. Um, that's our government, you know. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans has a responsibility to the people of Canada. They have a responsibility to the First Nations. And more than anything, they have a responsibility to protect our wild salmon. And I didn't see that there. I saw people like Mia Parker, who used to work for Greek, who's now writing policy for DFO. Claire Backman, who used to be DFO, and now he is industry. Um, and Alexander Morton has, is really a free voice for the wild salmon people, for the wild salmon. You don't even have to like her. I mean, I do, but it's, it's about the wild salmon, and, and that's what she's about. And everybody was trying to shut her down, you know, and I'm, I'm really grateful that she has the confidence and the knowledge and has been out there looking at the fish to stand up and 
and present a true point of view. You know, um, we need way more of that. And, and I didn't see, I didn't see that hardly at all for all the days I sat there since August 22nd, you know. And I was there previous for Dick Beamish's testimony, which just sounded ridiculous, you know. His, his science and his methods, and he's a guy with the Order of Canada and, and, and all these honors, but um, we're, we're missing a lot of the truth, I think. Well, I think there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different uh, things going on here. I think what's partly was uh, pretty obvious is uh, the, today was the uh, council for the, the government and the aquaculture industry, both the provincial and federal governments, really uh, took their best shot at Alexander Morton on the stand to try to, I think, hammer away at her credibility. I, I don't think it really worked very well. I think people in the room, uh, for the more majority, were, were pretty aware of what that what that tactic was. and. And uh, I think it probably backfired a little bit for them. I think it was just sort of on the heels of a pretty strong day yesterday for Alex and uh, Catherine Stewart from Living, Living Oceans Foundation, Foundation uh, that uh, I think did a, put on a pretty good show. And I think there's also been some really interesting documents that have come out and, and some revelations for me, for somebody that's been covering and following this issue pretty closely over the last number of years. Even for me, there was a, some, some pretty surprising revelations that came out, one of them being, I think, the, the just how much of a revolving door there is between industry and government. And we learned that the other two people that were on the stand, one of them uh, began by working for the pr province and was an instrumental in deciding where many of these fish farms would be located on the coast and then went to work for the industry, ultimately, and marine harvest. And the other woman that was on the stand had just left the industry after years working for Grieg Seafood, another big Norwegian salmon farming company, is now working for DFO and is helping to design the regulations that are being applied to the industry. So you can really see how industry and government are working together. And I think the efforts that council went to uh, to cover up as much of uh, any kind of new data or information about diseases and these other issues that have been coming to bear from getting in onto the record in the commission and, and getting out there in the public eye and the media. And I, I really think, you know, one of the positive stories about the Cohen Commission here has been that much of that information has gotten out there now. It's really about where does where do we go from here? How do, how do the various organizations of First Nations who are concerned about protecting wild salmon from the impacts of, of aquaculture, what do they do with this new data that's now made public and, and where does the story go from here? Information that should have been public years ago uh, was made available to someone as dedicated as Alexander Morton and she read uh, the Ringtail database, which was all of the compiled documents from the DFO, the province, and uh, a number of other groups. But those are the two main contributors. Um, and those documents exposed so much of the corruption that's going on between the scientists and the management. And we saw some of those come out, and I'm sure there was a lot more. Christy Miller needs to be fully supported. We need to uh, embrace new science. We need to test the farm fish and, and see how they impact disease. We need to clear the Fraser uh, River sockeye migration route because the spread of viral particles during a disease outbreak clearly makes the salmon farms gatekeepers to uh, our wild salmon and, and that's not acceptable. DFO has to drop uh, promotion of aquaculture as part of its mandate and I think the salmon farms just need to get out. This, this is not good for anybody who lives in, in BC, in Canada, um, and all throughout the province. The, the, the fish go a thousand miles plus, you know, all, all throughout our province, coming up the Fraser, and other tributaries too. So, it's insanity, really. Out of seven years of sampling, last year was the first year I'd actually seen a DFO boat come to do samples anywhere in the Discovery Islands. Um, and talking to DFO, they confirmed when asked, have they ever done samples before um, before last year? And they haven't done samples in the Discovery Islands since, I do believe, 81 or 82, somewhere around then. There was some samples on sockeye done, but since then they've never done anything on uh, We have to get rid of fish farms on the west coast, for sure, because eventually uh, it's not sustainable, uh, it's killing the wild stocks, and uh, viruses are spreading more and more and more. Now we have leukemia, uh, anemia, uh, we have viruses that are, are spreading into the wild stock and this is going to cause uh, 
uh, our extinction of the of the West Coast salmon, all species, unless we get rid of fish farms. I think we got a lot of documents into evidence and all of us can work with the evidence that is now officially public through the Commission. So that's huge. And in terms of what will we get out of it, I mean, we'll see what the recommendations are, but frankly, how many times have we been through processes at, like the SCSA, got really solid recommendations and the government does nothing? I think what we need to do is use the evidence that's now public about how DFO behaves, how the industry behaves, the level of cooperation between the two and put pressure on our elected officials. It's time for change.